from Mexico to Louisiana, the Red River down to the Laguna Madre, Texas is one big playground. Join us as we take you on some of the best outdoor adventures the Lone Star State has to offer. <laughs> now there you go. This is Fishing and Hunting Texas. For me, one of the greatest experiences in hunting is actually learning a new weapon. To go out, get it shooting well, trying to understand it, and then put it into practice. Michael Worsick has got the opportunity with the new Umarex air gun, and it's going to be a great hunt. Then, later in the show, Michael and I will head to Choke Canyon Reservoir, chasing crappie, and we don't catch very many, but we catch a lot of different fish. Thanks for joining us. This is Fishing and Hunting Texas. You know, the Air Saber is a product that I honestly didn't even know existed. I didn't know anything was out like that. Whenever I first looked at it, you know, you kind of think, well, what is an airbow going to do? And when you first shoot it, you realize it's got a lot more power than you really think it would. After messing with the airbow for a while, you really get confidence in it that it's got enough power to go out there and go hunting. I mean, it's not like, you know, when you shoot it at a 30 yard target, it's not arcing like you would think it would. It's shooting that, that bolt about 500 feet a second and it's, it's there. Before we hit the field with Michael to put the Umar X Air Saber to good use on some wild hogs, let's learn a little more about it. I've had the opportunity to hunt with a lot of different platforms, whether it's rifle, bow, crossbow, but the air bow is something that's new to me. This is the new one, the Air Saber. can shoot an arrow at 480 feet a second, comes with a scope, and the way it works is you got a charging port up here. This cylinder holds all your air. You charge it up to about 3600 PSI and it will shoot about 480 feet a second. That is a hunting platform. We're using the Umarex Ready Air to power it. It takes all the guessing out of it as well. It's extremely easy to use when you pair it up with something like the Air Saber. All you've got to do, you've got your hose plugged into the unit. You put this right in the charging port, plug it all the way in, and then you just hit the button. One thing that's important after the pump shuts down, letting you know that you've reached your PSI, just reach back here on this bleed screw, let all the pressure out of this hose. Once that pressure's gone, you can pull it out and you won't have any pressure built up in the hose. Over here, we've got the Air Javelin. Now this one is built more for target practice, small game, you know, just kind of getting out, having some fun. Still shoots 300 feet a second. It's CO2 powered, so you don't have to worry about bringing anything into the field. Just keep your CO2 canister with you. And if you look over here, we've just got some other products out. Now, the cool thing is about this is, I'm gonna be hunting with the Air Saber later. So, got my arrows right here, and it's really pretty interesting the way it works out. You charge it up, these arrows are hollow, you just stick them in, the veins don't have to go any kind of certain way. You go all the way down, you'll feel it bottom out, and that's it. You're ready to hunt. Take it off safety, make an ethical shot, I'm excited about this. So we decided to come out here and do basically a midsummer hog hunt. We didn't get out there too early. We got out there in the evening before whenever it started cooling down and uh, we knew we had a good chance to see some pigs. So as soon as that feeder goes off, they all come running out. And I had already had the air bow up. I'm ready for them. You basically know if those pigs are within the vicinity of that stand, they're going to come running out and it's going to go down quick. I think we made a good shot on him. It looks like he ran this way. I can already see a little bit of blood down here, so let's see if we can find him. 
it's always a good sign whenever you walk up and immediately find blood. It just makes you feel like everything is the way you think it should be. It's not always perfect, but most of the time. I mean, it's just all over these leaves up here as well. There he is. You know, I think a lot of people ask, why do you hunt with so many different things? And it's really just about getting in, out in the woods and trying something new. I like rifles, I like archery, and the air bow was just something else that I can try. And obviously it's lethal, it's accurate, and it's just fun to try new things. I mean, whenever I first got this, I had no idea what it even was, how it worked, and it's another way to have fun. And uh, I enjoyed the heck out of that. I'm ready to get back in the stand. So that was a really cool hunt with Michael. Now he and I get to go to Choke Canyon Reservoir, and we've got a friendly little competition that'll be pretty fun at the end. Fishing and hunting Texas will be right back after this short break. You have a full-time job and you want to be a full-time angler. Don't waste time scouting. You want to catch fish. That's where Garmin comes in. Our mapping with Navionics data lets you see more detail than the fish do. It's kind of a big deal. Oh, and our industry-leading live sonar is so crisp and clear you'll think you jumped in. You're welcome. Now if only we had a powerful, efficient, whisper-quiet trolling motor. Actually, we do. It's called Force. We knew you'd like that. Less time finding, more time catching fish. Only with Garmin. When there's miles of water in front of you and hundreds of feet below, you need a boat with the chops to dominate, no matter the conditions. With the strength and technology to overcome the elements and the competition. Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. Welcome back to Fishing and Hunting Texas. Now, last year, I had an unbelievable trip at Choke catching big crappie. And so in my mind, I thought, hey, I want to fill the freezer for deer season. I want to get out there and catch some of those giant crappie again. But we get down there and the fishing is just flat tough. Well, we're joining Clark and Michael for a mid-afternoon outing on the water. They've already landed a few fish, but like Clark said, the fishing's been tough, and they're not seeing much of the species they're trying to drop hooks on. There Crappy. we go. You know, the thing is, when you've got panoptics looking down there, you see so many fish. There's a lot of crappie, there's white bass. We've caught white bass, drum, catfish, crappie and we're gonna catch bass before it's all said and done. Put him in the cooler. There's one. Nope. Doing good on catfish. He was sitting up there on the top. He was? Yeah he was. This is a crappie I'm pretty sure. Not a great big one but a keeper. Really, you look at my setup here, I'm really just got a drop shot setup, putting a men on there, catching a nice crappie. What do we think, crappie or not crappie? Uh, nah. Gonna be a, definitely a, gonna be a crappie. Nope, catfish. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a heck of a missed call right there. <laughs> well, really, I was just hoping. <laughs> it's a nice one though. Got one. <laughs> so what we're doing is, is we're going along finding brush pile, just like anybody else would using side view. And 
every brush pile we find, you know, we've caught three or four crappies so far, but got a load of catfish. Now I've had that happen here before where I caught catfish, I caught white bass. A lot of times the ones that are up in the top of the brush have been crappie in the past, whereas the ones on the bottom, but this one is every fish. So maybe it's a depth thing. I mean, we'll end up going deeper. We'll try shallower. We just got to try to figure it out. We tried fishing any kind of brush pile we could see, whether it be like a salt cedar or a big giant sunken tree or, you know, something that somebody sunk or, you know, some of it looked like culverts. We tried everything that we could find and, you know, there's fish on every one of them. The crappie just didn't cooperate that well. We were catching a lot of catfish. Uh, I can't complain too much because we were getting a bite every now and then. But when you get on a body of water and you're going after one specific species and that species does not bite, you get to where you don't even want to set the hook on a catfish. I mean, I know all you guys watching that love catching catfish, eating catfish, you're thinking, I mean, why in the world is he not excited about the number of catfish he's catching? Well, because I came here to crappie fish, not catfish fish. And I have a hard time switching gear. Catfish. Yeah. I could have told you that before you ever jerk. No! Oh, oh, no! You're gonna have to measure him. Called that wrong. We sure did. <laughs> I mean, like we knew what we were doing yeah. and we did not. They gotta be 10, right? 10 miles close. He keeps. Finally. I got one too. You win that one. I did. <laughs> but I don't think he's long enough. We're at least getting some crappie bites. You know, we found a pile. I can see a lot of fish in there. I've seen a lot of fish on every pile we've been to today. And that's the thing about it is when you're on a good lake, Choke Canyon Reservoir, there's lots and lots of fish a lot of times. And so you got to figure out and decipher what they are. You know, crappie fishing is Usually, for me, it's a vertical type of fishing where I'm getting straight upon something, and live scope makes crappie fishing easy. And I have actually heard from people that if you're a crappie fisherman, you're using live scope. And that's just the way it is. You can actually see groups of fish. You can see the fish move up there to your bait. The maddening thing about this trip was is we could see them, but they just wouldn't bite. They'd kind of sponge that minnow and you'd kind of feel them and you pull and they'd get your bait, you know, and it, it was just maddening. But sometimes, you know, it just doesn't go exactly like you think. That's okay. We, we made the best of what we could, caught some fish, got lots of bites, and had fun fishing together. When we come back, we'll head out on Choke Canyon Reservoir for day two of crappie fishing and some good natured rivalry between these in-laws. Reliability, Yamaha is known for it. And it's something boaters value because these days few things are built to last. When we find something that is, we hold on to friendships, traditions, outboards, because every second on the water is sacred. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters choose Yamaha for the long run, for life. Because reliability starts here. Pro-inspired, pro-designed. Tested and proven by legends on the water. Dominating the tournament trail for over 50 years. Everything you need, one legendary brand. Strike King. Welcome back to Fishing and Hunting, Texas. Hey, getting started this morning. Yesterday afternoon, we caught a few, caught a ton of catfish. I mean, I know catfish are biting good, but I don't want catfish, I want crappie. Last year, we came and we caught more crappie than we could even deal with, giant, giant slabs. And so, I got my son-in-law, Michael Worsing, we have fun fishing together. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> it ought to be a fun morning. Let's go see what we can do. You know, the way I've got my screen set up is I've got one of them on panoptics, and panoptics has just kind of become the essential one. 
because I can look around and see everything that I need to see. I can see brush, I can see fish. And then I also got any waypoints I wanna see, I'll see on here. I can still look out to the side on side view, look down on traditional or, or down view. So I really like it that way. It works really well, bass fishing or crappie fishing. The Garmin Live Scope performed how it always does and showed Clark and Michael exactly what was below the boat. But just like the previous day, they reeled in a whole lot of fish, but not a whole lot of crappie. At least, not any keepers. So to keep things lively, Clark came up with a friendly little competition to close out their day. So we've had a little bit of a struggle, but one thing about it is we've caught a lot of fish. No, we've and caught so a lot. You and I always have a little bet. Usually wait till kind of the end, in the last 15 minutes, last 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, what the heck is going on here? We're not even done talking. But the bet is, is in the last 20 minutes, who can catch the most fish? Yeah. It doesn't matter what they are. We know there's all kinds of species here. There's drum, catfish, crappie, white bass, black. Hold on, just a second. I'm stay stay off the spot. I it. know you are. Trying to get the upper hand on me, but it's not going to work. We'll get up here, see what happens. Here's the deal. The bet is, it's who buys drinks on the way home, way home, which he usually loses, but that's okay. Crappie is worth two points. Keeper. Keeper, it's got to be a keeper. Keeper crop, a uh, uh, non-keeper's worth one, yeah. and every other fish is worth one, and in 20 minutes, we're gonna see who wins. One thing I realized pretty quick is, we're getting a lot of bites and we're missing them. So I decided, well, I'm gonna cut my minute in half. And I think I caught a crappie, it was my first fish I caught, I catch a crappie, so I got one. So I'm thinking, you know, I like that, but I might make it a little bit bigger, so I cut the next minute in half, I use the head, and then I use the tail, and I start catching catfish, and Michael, he just decided he was going to be hard-headed. No, Clark, I want to catch a keeper crappie. I'm not going to change. I had a bite on that cat. No, I bet you do. Look at that, right in it. Uh-oh, little two-pointer. That ain't no two-pointer. We're going to have to measure him and try to get 10 inches out of him to get two-pointer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking he ain't going to make it, but... Mmm. Wee bit shy, but that's one, one nothing. When you say wee bit shy, you mean about two inches? Yeah, about. <laughs> you got one? Two. Number two. Halfway through and it's two nothing. You come out with my other half man in there? No, no, I'm not gonna go to your, I'm not gonna stoop to your level. All I can tell you is that's a mistake. I'm still hoping for a good fish. That looks like another catfish. Sure does. Three nothing. I should have just cut my minute, but I just, I couldn't make myself. I didn't want to stoop to his level. All right, we just moved. We've got about 10 minutes left. The score right now is 3-0, Clark's winning. The thing I don't agree with is we're, we're supposed to be still crappie fishing, but he's just totally switched up to catfish. To me, he's taking this just a little bit too far. I mean, I'm still hoping to have something to eat when we get back and get done, but just not sure I can agree with that switch. The competition for bragging rights between father-in-law and son-in-law will conclude after the break. Will Michael make a mad dash for the victory line or will Clark hold on to his dominating lead? Find out soon. From sun up to sun down, day in and day out, we work hard, we play hard, and to keep us going during those long hours, we demand performance. Angle Coolers, 
the original high performance cooler. Welcome back to Fishing and Hunting Texas. When we went to break, Clark had a 3 0 lead over Michael with 10 minutes left in the competition. But it's not over till it's over. That may be a crappie. Nah, uh, too big. I don't think that's a crappie. Circling too much. Oh, it is. But you only got one point on it. I'll take it. Oh, I had one deck on it. Yeah, you can have him. Yeah. Three to one. You're making a run at it. It doesn't really matter how many we catch it. It's all, oh, gosh. gosh. See, if you'd have been paying attention and not trying to talk smack, you might have caught him. <laughs> now, the thing about Clark is he doesn't hide the cockiness all that well. He catches one fish and he is just on cloud nine. He starts talking trash and it just doesn't stop. Nail in the car. All I gotta do is catch one keeper. One keeper and a catfish. And you got three minutes. You better get with it. I didn't say the odds were great. Yeah, I like to win and I like to compete and it's always fun to have something to fish for at the end of the day. I tell you what, this fishing's pretty fun. It looks like it. I said we were gonna go till 10 o'clock, we got two minutes right now. Okay. You better pull a rabbit out of the I, I gotta do something. There's so many times that you've, you've won, caught fish all day, and then right at the end of the day, I'll come up with some bet just because that's just what we do. Well, what normally happens is we make a bet at the beginning of the day, and I'm winning that one. So you come up with another bet that's going to override the original bet. Absolutely. A like whoever, whoever catches the next fish or whoever catches the biggest fish in the next 10 minutes, something like that. And it usually leads to me buying dinner or drinks or whatever it's going to be. <laughs> I guess the one thing you can say about Choke Canyon is whether it's bass, because we've had some unbelievable bass trips uh, here, we've and crappie, some. we've had some unbelievable crappie trips here. But you're going to catch something. Oh, you're going to catch something. You're going to get some bites of something. To, today it was more like catfish and drum and brim and white bass and occasional crappie. Lots of catfish, but that's okay. We still some, had fun with it. For some people, that'd be a great trip. <laughs> well, when you come thinking you're going to catch crappie, that's what makes it harder, but it's still pretty fun. Uh, it's been a good trip. Might be a good way to end it right here. Oh, hold on. Could have a keeper. I thought I had scissors. I'd have cut your line right there. <laughs> I don't think he's a keeper, but it's a crappie. It's been fun. At the end of the day, I catch two, maybe three crappie and three, four catfish to his one catfish. I don't know what my total was, but six, five, six, seven to one. So it was victory. I'm buying food and drinks on the way home and uh, I I'm fine with it. We have a good time every time we get on the water and you know, we got a couple fillets of fish. We'll end up having a fish fry at some point and it was a good trip overall. Clark and Michael may not have run into flurries of crappie fish on this trip, but that certainly didn't stop them from having a good time or from getting a couple of good digs in at one another. <laughs> Next time you head out on the water, don't get discouraged when the fish aren't biting because there's always a way to turn a crappie situation into a positive one. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Fishing and Hunting Texas. Fishing and Hunting Texas is a Careco TV production. This episode was made possible by these partners.
born in Japan. Using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament bass fishing, from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. TH Marine has been producing top-of-the-line marine accessories to rig boats from transom to trolling motor for decades. From jack plates to fish care to LEDs, TH Marine has you covered. TH Marine, outfitting your boat from transom to trolling motor.